Hello, Richard Calhoun, real estate broker, 40 years here in Silicon Valley with Creekside Realty, working with buyers and sellers. We're here to talk about week 52 of last year, 2021, now that we're into 2022. This URLs we'll come back to in a few minutes. We're going to get right into the data. First data slide, three lines, two sets of data. We're looking at supply and demand. The supply is the blue line down here, and you can see it's been basically going downhill. A normal marketplace would be level with the yellow line, which is percent of normal. Percent of normal is based on the five years of 2015 through 19, which were all five good years. The second line, the gray line, is the new inventory that's coming on the marketplace. And you can see it bounces a little bit more especially on the holidays. You basically have Labor Day back here, you have Thanksgiving, and now you have Christmas. The dip in is greater when you're looking at just the one year, the current year, versus the five-year median. Because over the five-year median, the holiday has flipped between two different weeks, so it tends to average out and de-emphasize the holiday week impact. That's the only reason this gray line is down here for Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Labor Day. The red line is the number of new offers, the demand. So that's the flip side. Again, you're down a little bit below the yellow line for Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Labor Day. But again, that's just because of the statistical averaging of those holidays over two different years when you're looking at the five-year median. So you really can't take anything away. That's one of the things that's important to realize about real estate is every holiday negatively impacts real estate. The bigger the holiday, the more the negative the impact is. There are two exceptions, Valentine's Day and Mother's Day, both of which have a slight positive impact. What the takeaway on this is the new inventory coming in, the gray line, has been basically at or slightly above the five-year median. The red line is the demand side, and it's been further above. It's been probably running 15% above the five-year median. The gray line was at the five-year median at the beginning part of the year. And basically since Labor Day, it's probably about 5-10% above. It's a little bit hard to tell with all the holidays. So it's there are more inventory finally coming on the marketplace, but the demand has still been higher than that extra inventory, which is why the total inventory that's available, the water level in the reservoir is going down. And we're now down below 60%. We're basically at 50%. And that varies based on the jig geographical and the type of property we're talking about. Now we're looking at days of unsold inventory. Days of unsold inventory is the single biggest indicator. It's a theoretical number, but it's an objective number. It's how quickly would everything sell that's on the market now at the current rate of sales if there was no new listings. It's basically the turnover rate of the marketplace. Five-year median, you can see, is normally up here around 50, 51 days. And right now we're hovering somewhere around 28, 29 days. So the lower the days of inventory, the quicker the market's turning over. We sell everything out basically in four weeks. And that is a strong seller's marketplace as indicated by the red shading, anything below 40. If and when we get back to having a lot of inventory and we have more than 80 days of inventory, that's what I consider to be a buyer's marketplace. This is now flipping over and looking at the buyers. It requires the sale price. That means it requires the closing. So there's a delay in this data of about five weeks. And what we're looking at is a sale price to list price distribution of every week for the last 22 weeks. The blue line dotted line down here is the worst month ever. And that is monthly data versus weekly data. December of 2001, the dotted red line at the top is the best month ever is April of 2018. Those are two monthly data. Everything else is weekly data. The purple line is the current week data. And there's a couple things I want to point out is one, this sharp jump here, right at somewhere around 23% of the sellers. All of a sudden at that level, it was a big increase. So what it's saying is almost a quarter of the sellers are all of a sudden getting significantly more. And basically they're right at the dotted line of our best month ever. Now, the bulk of the sellers are quite a bit below. It's one of the better weeks we've had out of the last 22, but it's not anywhere close to the record high. So it's just unusual seeing that kind of jump. And there's been a lot of movement in the slope, in the shape of this line in the last couple of weeks. And I've commented on it several times, and I'm really not sure why that's happening. It's more likely to happen at the end of the year when there's limited inventory. In other words, this week, there was only 249 transactions in both counties in both types of properties versus a number closer to 500 normally. So that leads for more instability in the line, but that's a fairly significant 
characteristic. The other thing I wanted to point out was down here, it goes to one of the worst weeks out of the last 22. So what's that really telling me? My guess is that some of the homes that have been on the market for a while are finally selling and they were overpriced, which brings down that curve. So you can see at the lower end, it's sort of down here, even a little bit at the lower end of the pack. How much significance is there in all that? It's hard to tell. You know, I, I haven't watched this graph that much to really know. But what I will point out is globally, you're between these two numbers and lines the outlying the worst month ever down here and the best month ever up here in the red. But what it's, and you're more towards the red line than you are towards the blue line. So we're clearly having a strong marketplace. But for the nuances of why we have the jump up here, why we're low here, I'm not sure it matters. And it's the data doesn't tell you why the data is what it's saying. So I'm just reporting what the data actually shows. This is a quick recap, and this will be the first slide after we pause for questions. This is basically what I look at. I look at days of unsold inventory, supply demand ratio. I look at the frequency of overbidding. How common is it for sellers to get more than their asking price? Then I look at the magnitude of that overbidding, how much above their asking price they're, they're getting. And then instead of just following the 50 percentile price, the median price, as most people do, I also add in the 10 percentile and the 90 percentile so you can get a feel for the range of pricing. And then you have it broken down by the 22 different micro market areas in the county, the redder the color in general, the hotter the marketplace, the bluer the color, the cooler the marketplace is. And the only blue that we have on here is based on price. And that's so you can find the more affordable areas right off the bat. With that, we'll go back to the URLs. And because we are in 2022, I have changed the URL. You now go to teenyurl.com, S-V-R-E-M-G 2022 at nine o'clock Saturday mornings to get to these shows live. It stands for Silicon Valley Real Estate Market Graphs and then the year. The handout is posted. I try to get that posted about 15 minutes before the start of the presentation in case someone wants to print it out. Again, you get to it by using the green root URL and then adding the letter H for handout and the specific date. So it would be 2022-0101 and that would be today's slide. If you want to go back in time you have to use the old URL, which is the second line here with the line through it. To get to my YouTube archive, you simply use the base URL. To get to a specific past it presentation, you add in the eight digit year, month, date code. And if it's a 2021 or 2020 code, you have to use the old URL, which was RE market graphs versus S. V-R-E-M-G. Anyway, I made the change to the first year. Hope I won't lose too many people on that. And with that, I'll pause for questions before we jump into the details behind my executive quick summary. Not hearing any questions, I'll move on. So here's the table. And basically the first thing is days of unsold inventory. As I said, it's a supply demand ratio in a free economy that really dictates what's happening. These single digit numbers are just insane. Foster City has zero listings. There isn't a single listing in Foster City or Redwood Shores on the marketplace. And it's been that way for been about a week, maybe eight, nine days that it's been that way with absolutely zero inventory. Then you get down into the townhouses at the bottom. And in San Mateo County, I only report on the base cities. Then you have the frequency of overbidding. Frequency of overbidding is how common is the overbidding. And you can see here in Cupertino, 93% of the sellers get more than their asking price. Foster City is at 86%. San Mateo County North is at 89%. 88.9, call it 89%. When you look up and down, the lowest area is 45.6% in the expensive areas in San Mateo County, right over the Santa Clara County border, which would be like Menlo Park, Atherton, Woodside, Portola Valley. So all the different areas are very strong. Condos are pretty strong. If you come over to magnitude of overbidding, the numbers are to the right of the color code. So here you can see the magnitude of overbiddings are basically just over 100%, right around 103%. So they're fairly pale in color compared to the single family homes that are a lot around 111%, 112%. 
it's just not as hot. And I wanted to keep the coloring consistent between the best, the different types of properties the best I could. So the redder the color, the more, the higher the buyers were overbidding. Then you jump over to sold price. And here you have three numbers. The middle number is the median price that most people follow. The number to the left is the 10% number. And the number to the right is the 90 percentile number. So 80% of the homes in Santa Clara County, single family homes are between a million and 3.6 million. Now, technically there should be a decimal point after the first digit on here, since I have an M out there, I intentionally left it out so that people just scanning through the numbers here can quickly spot that that's county data for Santa Clara. Then San Mateo County data is down here again, where I left out the decimal. I shifted it three places to the right. I really should put a K there instead of an M and then I'd be accurate. And the same with condos, where it's county data. So where you're talking about fractions of a million, that's the different micro market areas. So you can quickly see that single family homes, yes, you can still buy a single family home for about $850,000 in Santa Clara County, but you're looking at areas like South County, Morgan Hill, Gilroy, San Martin, and East San Jose, downtown San Jose, and South San Jose. And only 10% of the homes are in that price range. The median in both of those price ranges is closer to 1.15, if I take a quick average of the two. So that quickly allows allows you to see what the prices are in the different area, or if you're looking at a, ge diff a specific geographical area over here on the left, then you can see what the micro market conditions would be for that area. Now we're getting into the details behind the summary table. And the first one we're looking at is the number of new listings. So this is the raw count for each week. You can see that for Thanksgiving, we dropped down quite a bit. You can see the last the five-year median, it's no, Labor Day is normally in week 34. It was in week 35 this year. You can see July the 4th is basically in the same week, both between the five-year median and the yearly data. So the yearly data is the blue line, and you can see we're below the five-year median. Partly that's because in a lot of those years, you'd be one or two days into the new year at the end by Saturday, because this is the very end of the 52nd week. Next week will be have a full week uh, in 2022. This is looking at the, the active inventory without offers. This is the total supply of inventory. So you can see that we're following the no normal trend, but we actually started the year with above normal inventory. Then we had normal inventory. And then basically starting on week 16, we started to be below in normal inventory. And then shortly after July, the 4th, basically somewhere around middle of July, the end of July, we started losing inventory. We're catching up a little bit now because we've been having more inventory the last several months, about the last three months, more inventory coming on the market than normal, which is helping us catch up a little bit, but demand is still outstripping it, which is why we're down here. And this is a record low inventory, by the way. We've never had this little inventory available in at least 40 years and probably longer than that. And considering the population population growth in the last 40 years, that's pretty significant. Now we're looking at the demand side. This is the number of offers that are accepted each week. So you can see the blue line, it has been basically consistently above the yellow line, except for the holidays. And we've talked about why that is multiple times. And you can see right now we're still above, you know, we're right at the level. And the only reason we're right at the level is you can see we had two weeks down for the five-year median. I suspect that next week, this will go up. And it's going to be hard to go up actually, because there is no inventory to buy. So inventory that's coming on the market this week that will come on the market this week is going to not accept offers until after into the second week. So we're going to be getting a delay just because there's nothing to sell. Now this is looking at the days on sold inventory over time. And you can see all three numbers here are lower than they've been for the last two years. And these are record low levels. It's not showing on the data, but these are record low levels for all three types of property. 20 days is up here. So these are down in the low teens, somewhere around 12, 14 days of unsold inventory. That's just insanely quick. It says that you'd sell everything on the marketplace in two weeks. And considering that most sellers want their property exposed for one weekend, you're losing Oh, oh, there's a week that which the homes are on the marketplace by force, they would, would sell if the sellers would accept an offer sooner. And so there's really only one week of inventory. 
This is the days of unsold inventory. And you can see even with sellers holding on the marketplace, there's some properties, micro market areas where we're under a week. These are basically the homes that are going to come on the market sometime this past week. They'll sell this weekend and the offers will be accepted next week, next during the next week. So that's the only reason you're having five and six days on these areas. So if sellers would take offers the second they went on the marketplace, these numbers would actually be quite a bit lower. Not only the ones that are at five, but all of them. And again, it's noteworthy. The only reason Foster City and Redwood Shores is at zero is there is zero inventory. There isn't a single listing available to purchase. So there's zero days of unsold inventory. Here's the frequency of overbidding. And I've come in about this in the past. This line fluctuates more than I would expect it to. I don't understand why. It's just a nuance. Yes, you're looking at you know data. You're not looking at that much data. But the buyers, you wouldn't think, would change the amount, the magnitude of their overbidding that dramatically from week to week. But they clearly do. Part of it could be a function of two things. One, how buyers are feeling for that particular weekend. And also, what came on the marketplace if you have more listing agents that are artificially pricing the property low, that's going to cause the number to jump. So you have a couple different variables that are causing the data to be more unstable. This is the frequency of overbidding over time. And you can see we're pretty strong in the territory. You can see condos are the worst, but they're sitting at 70%, 68% of the sellers are getting more than their asking price. You can't complain about something like that. Both single family homes are between 75 and 80%. They're pretty close together, maybe around 77, 78%. This is the breakdown ge geographically of the different amounts of overbidding, the frequency of overbidding. The red of the color, the more common it is, but you can see that pretty much everything is in the red column. The one that isn't are the expensive areas right in San Mateo County over the border, but still at 46% of the sellers getting more than their asking price. You can't complain about that not being a strong marketplace. This is the magnitude of overbidding. Again, you can see it's a sawtooth function, which again, surprises me a little bit. And you can see the trend up here is up. We're now at somewhere around 110% of the seller's asking price is the average. We can see last week we were about 109.5%. The week before that we were down at 108, but then we were up at 109.5. So, you know, you can see we climbed last year fairly quickly at the beginning part of this year. Then we were plateaued over the summer. Then we actually slowed down a little bit. But basically, since Labor Day, it's hard to see with the sawtooth, but I would argue that the line's been basically sloped up something like that. And so that's saying that buyers are feeling more and more desperate. They're overbidding the seller's asking price by a greater and greater percentage of the asking price. This is the graphical representation geographically showing you what areas are the hottest. South County, even though it's pretty aggressive, has one of the lower amounts of overbidding. They're just not used to overbidding down like we are down there. It, it's just, it typically wasn't as a hot marketplace as we are now. So on frequency, they're right up there with us, but they are lagging behind on magnitude of overbidding. We talked about this graph a little bit earlier at length. The purple line is the current line, the current week data. It's the sale price to list price ratio. There's some anomalies in there, but generally speaking, we're we're showing a very strong week compared to where we are in the last 22 weeks. And even historically, because this is the best month ever, and we're talking about data going back to September of 97. So, and that's the worst month. So that's your range. And you're definitely towards the upper end of that range. This is the last 12 weeks. And you can see the purple line is outdoing the other 11 weeks for most of the time towards the upper end. Here, it really dropped down. And at the lower end, it's sort of in the middle of the pack. So a little bit of fluctuation, but still not bad and strong marketplace. Here is showing the sale price, the 10 percentile, the median price, and the 90 percentile for the different geographical areas. I'm not showing the county price because this is just an index for this particular map. This is showing the price over time. To be clear, the gray line at the top is San Mateo County single family homes. The red is Santa Clara County single family homes. The yellow is Santa Clara County condos. And I'll comment, notice how the condos and townhouses are a much more stable line. That's historically exactly what happens. Single family homes bounce a lot more where you have these periods of rapid appreciation and then you actually have a little bit of corrections at time and then you're flat and then you start going up again. Condos and townhouses tend to be far more stable, slow and steady. 
This now is a key breakdown between some of the different metrics that I look at. On the active listings, you can only really look at inventory. And so inventory, you can see Santa Clara County single family homes is the lowest at only 35% of what you'd expect it to be. San Mateo County is at 55%. Santa Clara condos is at two thirds, 66 and a Actually, that's pretty darn close. Isn't 66.6666? You can't get closer than that. And then the Bay Cities actually has more inventory. You know, and I'm almost to the point where I'm going to have to go back and look at the data on my five year meeting. Potentially, I did something wrong on getting that data. It just stands out like a sore thumb. It's been that way the whole time. I have confidence in my current data. So the only other variable could be the past. But basically, it's saying that you have double the inventory you'd expect in those kinds of in, in that type of property, all townhouses and condos in San Mateo County. But yet, you only have 18 days of unsold inventory. So that, that doesn't really fit. Then for all of them, you need the offers to get days of unsold inventory because you need the rate of sales, but you're sitting here countywide single family homes in Santa Clara County at 11.3 days. In San Mateo County, you're at 11, 10.9 days. Santa Clara County condos at 15.6. That's one of the slower areas and 15 days being one of the slower areas is insanity. Then if you go down to the Bay Cities, you're at 18.2 and that is the absolute slowest. And you can see that's a strong marketplace. Then you get over to closing. So this is a five-week delay, basically, to get the sale price in order to know what the sale price to list price ratio is. On single-family homes in Santa Clara County, basically 80% of the sellers are getting more than their asking price. In Santa Mateo County, at 75%. In condos, it's basically right at 65% for both counties. Magnitude over bidding, Santa Clara, you can see is at 111%. San Mateo County is at 110. It is noteworthy that Santa Clara County has been outperforming San Mateo County since the pandemic lockdown started. And that is not historically the ratio. Normally, San Mateo County would be doing stronger than Santa Clara County as far as the frequency and magnitude of overbidding. Coming down to condos and townhouses, much less overbidding, but still overbidding by 4%. And any seller that gets 4% more than their asking price instead of getting negotiated down is pretty happy. Then we have appreciation. So Santa Clara County single family had a peak appreciation of 24.8% back on June 29th. We're sitting now at 22.3%. So we're not at the peak for the year, but we're pretty darn close to it. We will be setting new records very likely next year, and it will happen fairly quickly, in my opinion. San Mateo County you had 24.6% appreciation at the peak. It was much more recent, just December 4th, but you have fallen back down now to 15.7. So you can see there's a fair amount of fluctuation in that number. Condos in Santa Clara County, the peak was 19% back in August. And in Santa Mateo County, only the base city. So this is the cities south of San Bruno and Daly City on the bay side of the bridge line. So basically, you're looking at Burlingame, Millbrae, San Carlos, Redwood City, Foster City, Redwood Shores, Atherton, Menlo Park, all those areas. You're avoiding the north stuff up around Pacifica, San Bruno, as well as the coast, just because there isn't that many condos. There's a fair number of condos in the San Bruno area, but I don't want to combine them because there's not enough to be statistical significant. And so I want, I'm using one of them to reflect what's happening in San Mateo County. And that's why I label it as the Bay Cities over here on the left and not as San Mateo County. But its peak was back in August and it was up almost 16%. And now it's down th almost 4%. So it's been a 20% swing. This shows you some of the recent histories. High over here indicates that it happened in the past, but most of them you can see most of the micro market areas have been in the last 10 weeks since October 9th. And you can see some have been very recent. This now is looking at not quite an apples and apples comparison because it's looking at December data and I don't get December data until January the 5th because I need data through January the 4th at midnight to be consistent with my definition. My definition is not calendar month, but is from December 1st for 35 days. And with December having 31 days, I need to get through including January the 4th to have those 35 days. But it's pretty 
darn reflective. And some of the key takeaways are inventory, 162 homes. So we only have 162 single family homes in Santa Clara County for sale at the moment. That is a record low. Our previous record low, not quite at this time, but darn close was 291. It's hard to say. I actually think on January 4th, the inventory will be slightly higher because we'll have some new listings coming on the marketplace. And I think the number of new listings coming on will outstrip the number of sales. The number of sales will be reduced because of the lack of inventory last week and because of the holidays. So this may be pretty darn close to our record low number. I do expect it to go up. Now, a week out from now, so in 10 days from now, that 162 may be actually lower. But when I report the data on January the 5th, reporting it to you guys on January the 8th, I wouldn't be surprised that that 162 is an actually higher number in this table. Then if you look at the average days on market and median days, seven. The, I mean, the lowest we've ever had was nine, and now you're at seven. And the lowest we had was 22, and now you're at 20. It may not sound like two days is a big deal, but the lower the numbers are, the harder there is to get any lower. It's going to have a hard time getting this median number below seven. What does that number mean? It means half the homes are selling in less than a week on the marketplace. And that only happens when an agent puts the house on the market, say, on on Wednesday, Thursday, and looks at offers on Tuesday and Wednesday, because anything longer than that, if you put the house on the market on two, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and then you look at one, offers Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're more, you're at 10 days. It gets really hard to get this median below seven or the average below 20. You can see the DUIs at 11. That's more meaningful, in my opinion. And you can see that's a record low by significant amounts. Uh, if I'm reading that correct, that looks like it was 18.5 days the previous record low. So you've cut that in by 50%, which is significant, where the median days have only been cut by 20% and the average days have only been cut by 10%. Then if you come down to the number of sales, number of sales this year is less than last year. So, you know, word to the wise, but I think the biggest reason for that is last year you had three times the inventory. So if you had three times the inventory with the demand we've had, we could have had th almost three times the sales. We probably wouldn't have had three times. We might've had double the number of sales. So the demand is out there, but for the first time, I feel fairly comfortable saying that the supply number of offers accepted is being limited by the number of listings and not anything to do with the number of buyers and their desire to purchase. Jumping down to closings, we can add in the sale price. And you can see now that we're at 111% of the asking price for the month of December. Our previous record was 109% and we're 80% of the sellers are getting more than their asking price. Our previous record was 75. So you can see that this December has been stronger than any other December we've had. And the closings are pretty strong. Wow, less than last year. We had 917 last year and we had 871. This may go up a little bit, but not dramatically. And then this is, is comparing apples to apples. But in order to do that, I'm talking about November data, which isn't too bad considering the Mercury News came out with an article today talking about the data in October and November. And we're already talking about data in December. And in a week, we'll be starting to talk about data in January. With that, I will go over the URLs one more time since they're changing. Going forward to get to the live broadcast on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m., use teenyurl.com. Um, S-V-R-E-M-G and the year 2021. To get to a handout, you add in the, start with the base URL of teeny URL, tiny URL. Yeah, it's tinyurl.com, S-V-R-E-M-G, H for handout, 2022-0101. And I did get that posted. It's up there for anyone that wants to get that. The archives, you can use it, the root URL and then just S-V-R-E-M-G, the spe any specific one. If it's in 2022, you use the new one with the eight-digit year-month date code. If it's a one from last year or 2020, then you don't have to use the old RE market graphs. So I'll probably drop these out next week, but I wanted to have a little bit of overlap and hopefully I won't lose anybody. Do I have any questions? Not seeing any questions. I will call it a week and see everybody next week. Take care. Bye for now.